Hi all, today we're going to be looking at the pigeonhole principle. The pigeonhole principle was set forward by the German mathematician directly, who also came up with analytical number theory. Anyway, that's beside the point. It's an extremely, extremely intuitive idea, and it is also one of the most powerful concepts in math. So let's get into it. The pigeonhole principle states, if there are n pigeons and only n minus 1 pigeonholes, then there must be at least two pigeons in some pigeonhole. Simple, right? Let's uh, let me illustrate my point here. So I have B1, the first pigeon, B2, the second, B3, the third, and then so on till B n minus one, the n minus one pigeon, and finally B n, the nth pigeon. Now I can put B1 into a pigeonhole. I can do the same thing for B2. And so on for B3 and I can do this all the way till B n minus 1 all right so all the pigeons till B till n minus 1 can have their own pigeonhole but when it comes to B n this guy is gonna have no pigeonhole so he'll have to share with either B n minus 1 or B3 or basically any of the other pigeons now let's look at a few examples Okay, so here's the question. Suppose a Martian has an infinite number of red, blue, green, and black socks in a drawer. What is the least number of socks he must remove to ensure that he has a pair? The question basically boils down to this. You have, you have four pigeonholes, four pigeonholes here, and this is for the color red, this is for the color green, this is, this is blue, and this is black now you've got these four pigeon pigeonholes here how many pigeons what is the least number of pigeons you must have in order to ensure that one of these pigeonholes has at least two pigeons well that answer is five right if i have five then i can i can easily put four of these pigeons inside each of these pigeonholes but the last one will also have to go in either the red or the blue or the green or the black one and therefore the martian will have himself a pair okay so the second example is prove that in a group of n people there will always be at least two people with the same number of friends so how many friends can any person in this group have well he can have between zero to n minus one friends right because obviously he can he can't friend himself it, let's let's assume right now that he he isn't friendless that no one in these this group is friendless so the number of friends that we can have is from 1 till n minus 1 all right all right now let's try applying the pigeonhole principle so i have n minus 1 pigeonholes here basically what that means is i can i can map the first guy to have one friend i can map the second guy to have two friends the third guy to have three friends and so on until finally i map the n minus one guy to n minus one friends so far they all have a different number of friends but then comes the nth guy and obviously the nth guy cannot have n friends because he can't friend himself and therefore he'll have to share a pigeonhole with one of these other guys and they'll have the same number of friends now let's look at the case if let's look at the case if uh, the group one person in the group is allowed to have zero friends so now we can have from zero to n minus two friends instead because no one is going to be is going to be a friend of the guy who has zero friends right so now the problem essentially becomes the same. Let's ignore the guy with zero friends right now. And so the first person will have one friend, the second person will have two friends, the third person will have three, so on. And finally, the n minus two person will have n minus two friends. Now, when we come to the n minus one guy, and this is really all the people we have aside from the guy who has zero friends, right? So when we come to the n minus one guy, he has to share a pigeonhole with either one of these guys, or he has to share a pigeonhole with the guy who has zero friends. And therefore, 
the case is again proven. Now for the last and the toughest problem. Suppose S is a set of n plus 1 distinct integers. Prove that there exists distinct a, b, which are elements of S, such that a minus b is a multiple of n. Okay, so let's analyze this last statement here. We're saying that a minus b is some multiple of n, k times n, where k is an integer. This means a minus b is congruent to 0 mod n. This implies A is congruent to B mod N. And now we have the set over here, S, which has N plus 1 elements, A1, A2, A3, all the way to A N plus 1. Now, let's think about the different remainders we can get when we divide each of these terms by N. Well, if the term we divide is a multiple of N, we can have a remainder of 0, right? Or or we can have we can have a remainder of one or we can have a remainder of two or three or four and so on till n minus one so basically the remainders we can have are between n minus one and zero so these are the remainders we can have right if if we have a remainder larger than n minus one then it's basically just going to get divided by n and it'll reduce to one number between this range again. All right, so now we have the pigeonholes from 0 to n minus 1. And these are basically n pigeonholes. And we had that s was a set of n plus 1 integers, right? So we have a1, a2, and so on, till a n plus 1. And now we can see that there's n plus 1 pigeons. And therefore, by the pigeonhole principle, one of these pigeons is going to share a pigeonhole with some other pigeon. And basically what that means is that one of these, two of these guys in here is going to have the same remainder when divided by n. And if they have the same remainder, it implies that a is congruent to b mod n. And if they have the same remainder, basically that means a minus b is congruent to zero mod n, and which was in fact our initial our initial statement which you had to prove, and therefore the proof is complete. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.